All right, YouTube. Welcome back to RV Daydream. We're into another review today. We're looking at a city style bike. They actually call it a city bike, but it's from DYU. We've done a review from DYU before on their, I think it's an F, F500, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was a great bike, did a great job, really powerful for how short it was and how small it was. Heidi enjoyed the height. This one's a little bit taller though. This one's a 26 inch bike. And this is the DYU C1. And again, they call it the C1 26 City. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. One of the things that I like about DYU um, as a company is as far as my communication with them, it's always been grand, it's been relatively quick, but they are concerned with the customer. Hence, this is one of the only boxes I've ever seen that said, please keep this box and enter packaging for future storage purposes and after sale service. So if there's some sort of a concern with getting the bike back to them, if that's something they determine they need to do, uh, they don't want you to uh, be left alone, left out in the cold and have said, oh man, I cut my box up and I threw away all the packaging. A lot of the companies, they just don't care. Usually what I do during these reviews, um, which I'll do in this case too, go ahead and cut this open, take a look at it, show you guys what the packaging looks like because that's a good indication of how well they're going to treat their customer. All right, now that we got this open, let's look down inside here. And just like I thought, the packaging is very good. Uh, the first thing you want to do whenever you get something like this is just pay attention to all the uh, components. Um, again, don't throw anything away right at the beginning. Uh, like for the example, this, sometimes uh, they have those things hidden. So obviously the components that are needed to build this, uh, some accessories, headlights, horns, stuff like that could potentially be in here. The pedals, I'm sure. There's the pedals, left and right pedals. Um, wow. I think this, I don't think those are plastic. Yeah, those are some sort of uh, aluminum alloy. Usually they're plastic. Let's see what else we got in here. The kickstand, of course. We'll go ahead and put that on. The skewer, I like this. That means it's got a quick release front end. Uh, that makes it a lot easier whenever you're uh, transporting your bike. Um, and like, for example, even though we had a full size F350, uh, it was a 2020 and I had a cap on it, um, I still had to remove the front tires uh, to clear, to make them stand upright inside the back of the truck. Um, then you have your standard charger here. Uh, just a uh, regular two amp charger. We've got a axle cap or axle nut cap. There's your tools. You got a couple open end wrenches, 13, 15, 14, 17. You have a few um, Allen wrenches. You do have a screwdriver. And then of course your instruction manual. Uh, please read the manual. Um, th there's a lot of stuff that you're gonna come across and go, oh, I didn't know I could do that. It shows you all your components and basically how to put this thing together which is easy to do. I'm not gonna go through the, the build of the bike. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Basic bicycle mechanics needed. This is pretty standard, but I, I really enjoy whenever they include this because you just never know. Um, tools are tools and sometimes you can't find what you need. For example, even though I have a whole bunch of tools, Believe it or not, I do not have a skinny, usually these are 15 millimeter. Yeah, I do not have a skinny 15 millimeter wrench like this to fit in between the crank and um, the pedal. Uh, it's just too big. So it's nice that this is here. A couple of things I wanna point out. The box itself weighs about 72 pounds. It does have handles strategically placed so that you can position your hands on either side of the box and carry it, but it's still 72 pounds. So if you have a problem with that, uh, bad backs, whatever, be careful. You might have to have an extra person. Once the bike is out and the bike's all assembled, the bike is only 55 pounds. Not very heavy for a bike that's 26 inch. That's actually very, very reasonable. You can kind of see by the packaging though, we have a few wire ties that we have to cut. So let me go ahead and get to work here. I'll put this thing together and uh, we'll give you some of its attributes. 
I'm gonna tell you that this is probably one of the least expensive bikes you could get into that will carry a big person. Uh, that's nice, and considering that you usually have to pay $1,200, $1,500 for a bike that can handle bigger people, um, and this one right now, time of filming, is sub $800 nice so here it is all together and it looks good it looks very well put together i like the overall aesthetic of it um, i'm kind of a sucker for step step throughs anymore just for the fact that i'm getting older and i don't like to swing my leg up and over um, uh, it's even rougher when you have like a rack or a basket on the back of your bike which in this case, uh, you can put about 50 pounds on here, 55 pounds. And I like the, the again, I mentioned this earlier, the bungees that they give you, um, this triple bungee setup. What's really nice is it's got a quick release so that you can just take them all at the same time, or you could just pop them one at a time. And then you have that traditional, remember your bike, the old bikes, how they, they had this spring-loaded bar in there? They still have that. Uh, this one, you will not be getting a rear tail light or brake light, and I don't have a problem with that because every bike we've had, no matter how good the rear brake light is, we've added auxiliary lights. You want to be seen when you're out on the road. As far as riding this out on the road, this isn't a speed monster. This is for people that don't mind going slow. This is for people who are afraid of these types of bikes. This one has a very manageable, very manageable 350 watt motor. Now the peak on the motor is gonna be higher than that, but this is a 350 watt sustained motor. With that smaller motor, the best part about that is your battery lasts a lot longer. So you're not going to have to pay for some crazy big battery to power a big motor. That's why this bike can stay at a little bit lower cost than most. The battery on this is a 10 amp hour. Your longevity of your battery as far as how many miles you can go on a trip, um, it, if you've got a smaller motor, it's going to allow you to go a lot further. So this does have throttle only or pedal assist. You could do one or the other. This is just a cable activated brake system. These disc brakes are just fine because the bike doesn't have a big heavy battery, because the bike doesn't have a big motor that's gonna drive you at crazy speeds, you can go with a little bit smaller brakes on this and you don't have to have hydraulics. So that too brings down the cost. Believe it or not, even at this price point, this does have adjustable front suspension that you can lock out, which is great. It's got a very nice headlight on there which just went out because the whole thing timed out. <laughs> I kind of like that. I like that it automatically shuts off. So we might as well jump up here. Now it's gonna be very difficult to see this. And this is something that you might be able to adjust. I didn't look in the manual. There we go. Now I can see this out in the driveway. It's just the camera can't see it as well as I can. So the headlight, you can see the little indicator there coming on and off. And of course that corresponds with the headlight going on and off. And then you just have a few settings. You have, I'm sure this is eco. Um, I guess this is daily and then this is sport. So the fact that it gives you those three settings makes it where you can go down the road a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. I am going to go in the menu though. I'm going to hunt it down and I'm going to change it from kilometers an hour to miles per hour. That's, you know, that's just something that I think needs to be done for anybody in the U.S. The other thing this has is some really nice, look at this, They're, they have this flexible grip here that's got air like circulation pockets in there. I like that, that's a cool design. The battery does come out with a key. They give you two keys. This is the extra one. They give you some sort of a key tag also, uh, if you lose a key. Um, the battery does not need the key to go back in. You do not turn on the battery with the key. Once the battery's in, it goes on and off using this here. The seat is very comfortable and sitting on this is very comfortable. I was riding it around in the drive here. We'll take it for a little cruise down the street here. I don't expect, again, to break any speed records, but even with as big as I am on this thing, it'll still get me down the road okay. So overall, the bike's not bad. It's very presentable. And I think that for the money, these bikes are really coming a long ways. There used to be a time that if you spent $800 for a bike, you was getting something from Walmart that was just horrible. But this frame is built very well. The welds look nice. A little bit dirty there where I kicked my foot over. Everything looks well put together. 
Uh, it does have plastic fenders on it, pluses and minuses to that. Pluses, I hardly have had any plastic fenders rattle. Um, minuses, uh, I guess they could break if it was in the cold. Uh, they would have a tendency to break, whereas metal ones would just kind of dent. You could straighten them back out or they would bend. But those metal ones, most of them I have a, I have a tendency to rattle. So I, this is unique though. I, I'm still trying to get over this. This is something that they do in scooters. Um, they you know put the display in the handlebar mount because a scooter don't have a lot of handlebar in the first place. So they kind of got to find a place for it. I, I think that's a good idea. Cable management is pretty good. I, I think they could have done a little better with cable management, but it still looks fine. I mean, the fact that they're, you know, putting some wire loom on there of any kind is nice. Yeah, let's go ahead and get on this thing and see what I think going down the road. All right, before I take it down the road, I want to tell you that I just pushed the power and the menu button at the same time just for a split second, and it switched over to mile per hour. So I'm thinking this thing's probably only going to do maybe, ooh, I don't know, 15 miles an hour. That's probably about all it's going to do with me on it. Uh, if I pedal, I'm sure it would help. But anyways, um, and that's going to be in the sport mode. If you set it to a lower setting, like an eco mode, you're really going to get a bike, like I said, is very manageable for those people that are scared to death of these things. But they still want to ride them so they can go explore. They can get out and they can maybe do some shopping. Um, this might be the bike for you for that. Let me see what it does with me on it. What a quiet ride. I was shocked by how quiet it was. I mean, usually you get a whiny noise coming out of the back, other than me and my big butt going, uh, I gotta pedal. <laughs> um, I pedaled a little bit, uh, but it it did okay. It it went to uh, 25 kilometers an hour. I, I don't know, what is that? Okay, so the little box in there says 25 is 15.3. <laughs> miles per hour so 15 miles an hour it felt actually I felt a little bit faster than 15 I'll tell you the truth it's very smooth ride very comfortable with the seats a lot more comfortable than I thought oh well I guess I didn't really push on it 
That's a memory foam of some kind in there. Well, no wonder it was soft. It's a good looking bike. Um, you know, we go through these bikes, we have a lot of different manufacturers, and each one offers their own special, you know, added feature. Uh, this one here, let's see. So what does this one add that's different than most of them? Well, the thumb throttle is really strange. Uh, look at this. This is, I've never seen a thumb throttle like this. Usually the thumb throttles are down here, or they're just these little tiny tabs that are, I don't know how to describe them, but that is... Uh, different. Um, I like that. Uh, I like the simplicity of the display. This is probably one of the biggest problems that older people have that don't, you know, aren't real tech savvy. I mean, you basically you power it on. Uh, at that point, you are on eco mode. You push the M for menu. Now you're in daily mode. Um, or whatever they want to call it and then s for sport so if you want to go slow you put it on e now uh, this does have some sort of built-in cruise control so if you hold your throttle for so many seconds at you know a certain speed whatever that may be it will continue don't be don't panic all you have to do is just tap your brakes tap either brake and it will cancel it out um, and again staying with that simplicity you then have just one button to push to turn on your headlight and one button to push to turn it off and then when you want to turn the whole thing off you just hold the power button again so i do like that what else does it offer well an inexpensive price and um, you know bungees free bungees um i'm a i'm kind of a bungee ratchet strap type guy i kind of like to collect those things so uh, it's nice that it's set up for the bike oh and the hand grips um these are probably I mean, these are very comfortable. They're very pliable. I mean, it's very, very nice to feel this. It's, it gives you a good, soft grip. Uh, doesn't hurt your hands. I, for a guy, I don't really have much problems with that, but I know that Heidi, um, even though her hands are pretty tough from working at an auto parts store, um, she still says sometimes, hey, my hands hurt from the ride. And I remember when we used to have mopeds and scooters. Uh, I'm talking about motorized scooters. Um, she used to wear gloves because she said they would hurt after a while. Um, so it's nice that they've addressed that. This is a, a very girl-friendly bike. Uh, check the specs as far as the height. Um, I think that they say a rider uh, of as short as 5'2". Um, yeah, I think the seat goes down just a little bit more there. But um, I know Heidi could ride it at 5'4". She wouldn't have a problem with it. Um, it it's a little tall for her. But... I mean, there's ways around that if you want to. Uh, you can cut down this tube right here and slide this collar down and make it clamp there. There's a little bit of modification that needs to be done, but that can be done, just to let you know. It's a good bike. What kind of rider is this specifically for? Somebody who is afraid of electric bikes, uh, someone who don't want to go fast, and somebody that don't plan on riding it, you know, the marathon, you know, of 27 miles or something. Uh, somebody that just wants to enjoy their bike ride. That's, that's who this bike's for. So uh, take that for what it's worth. I mean, that's kind of what I'm coming across here, kind of the way I feel about it. Uh, tell me what you guys think. Uh, what do you think about the color? It's pretty subdued. I like bright colors just to be seen on the road. Um, again, uh, not a big deal. This is never going to be a make or break uh, deal for me when it don't have a rear brake light because I don't think hardly anybody can see those brake lights in the first place. Same with the turn signals. It's very rarely that you can see turn signals uh, to where drivers can pay attention to what you're doing. But if you buy an aftermarket um, light that you know is a high visibility light, uh, you know, that's, that's usually the way we go. Even the headlights, even though this headlight seems to be very nice, we usually have some sort of clamp on external headlight that's even brighter. It really makes a difference to be, again, seen on the road. You want to be seen out there. Uh, the, the fact that they include fenders and a rack, that used to be something that nobody did. And now it seems like everybody is. But when you get lower in the price point, that's the kind of stuff that usually the manufacturers start taking away from the bike. They start taking away the fenders. They start taking away the uh, the rack, and you have to buy them separately. So kudos, I mean, all the way around. They put together a good bike, and again, as a entry-level 
type ride. And again, for people that are just not sure 100%, this is a good way to get into it. So the links will be down in the description for this. I don't know if I have a discount for this or not, but if so, it'll be in the description. And as always, guys, we hope to see you out there. Bye.